Hey everyone, welcome to the second video for section 7.9. So we've started talking about non-homogeneous systems, now we're going to talk about more general systems that are non-homogeneous and aren't just uh, shifted by a constant vector, but something else that we can actually sort of deal with. So we're going to start by talking about diagonalizable systems. So we hit that a little bit in section 7.7, 7, where we saw how if a system is diagonalizable, it's easier to solve the homogeneous equation because you can just make it diagonal, solve the decoupled system, and then go back to the, the coupled case and solve for your x that you wanted from the beginning. It turns out you can do the same thing for non-homogeneous problems. So let's go ahead and start going into that. So part two of this is going to be diagonalizable systems. So we're looking to solve the general problem x prime equals ax plus some vector g of t. And we're going to assume a is diagonalizable. So we want to use the fact that it's diagonalizable to make this easier to solve this system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let T be a matrix so that T inverse AT is diagonal. We've seen this trick before where if it's diagonalizable, I can pick a matrix T to make that happen. And how do I do that? I get T from the eigenvectors of A. And then I again want to do the same trick where I'm going to set X to be TY as in I'm going to define Y by this relation. And I just want to plug in again. So if I plug in x equals ty into my first equation, I get ty prime equals a times t times y plus a vector function g of t. t is a constant matrix again, so this is t times y prime equals a t y plus g of t. And I can multiply both sides by t inverse. So I get y prime equals t inverse a t y plus an h of t where h of t is t inverse g of t or g of t equals t h of t. So I'm just going to define this new function h. Now in general you're going to have to solve a system of equations to get this h but you can get it via these relations over here. If you know t inverse, just multiply by t inverse. If you don't, you can solve the linear system here to get h. But then t inverse at is diagonal, so this is y prime equals dy plus h of t. But now I can write this out in its different components. Because d is diagonal, this becomes y1 prime equals r1 y1 plus h1 of t, y2 prime equals r2 y2 plus h2 of t, and on down to yn prime equals rn yn plus hn of t, where I've said that d is going to be r1 to rn on the diagonal. So this, if you look at this again, this is entirely decoupled. So we can use normal first order linear equation methods this is going to be non-homogeneous, so it's going to have this integrating factor and integrate both sides, that kind of thing. We can solve for the y's via normal first order methods. Using normal first order methods, and then get x equals t y. So once I find y, I multiply by my same t again to get x. So you basically use this transformation to make it diagonal, which then decouples the entire system. I can then solve for my y1, y2 up to yn individually using normal first order equation methods, and then I can just put them back together into a vector and multiply by a matrix T to get my X back. So for instance, this last set may look something like Y1, Y2 prime equals 2, 0, 0, 3 times Y1, Y2 plus T squared E to the T. And then when I split into two equations, I get y1 prime equals 2y1 plus t squared, and y2 prime equals 3y2 plus e to the t, both of which we can solve by normal first order methods. It's annoying, it's going to be a couple integration by parts in there for the first one, but you can do it. And now, so I'm not going to do an example for this quite yet. I'm going to save it till the end, because I'm going to do an example at the end where I solve the same problem three different ways using all the methods we talked about in this section. So that's going to be it for this one. I um, hope that all made sense. If it didn't, definitely come talk to me. But the idea is just that if it's diagonalizable, so it's just a diagonal matrix, which is easy to solve on its own, and then revert back. All right, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.